not a God that just sits there and stands still when things are happening in our lives. You are actually moving all the time. If we feel it or if we see it, you're still there. You're still moving. And we just want to thank you so much. We want to thank you for our stories that we have that we can tell other people. Because without them, that one person might not ever know who you are. So Lord, we just thank you and we praise you and we love you so much. In your name we pray, amen. Don't go ahead and have a seat. good news or the bad news? Too bad. I'm going to give you the bad news. The bad news is this is the last week of the way. Aww. How many of y'all have like loved it? Learned a little bit about Jesus? Learned a little bit about the Holy Spirit? We've been doing this for a while. But tonight we wanted to make it super special for the last week of the way. So we flew in the man with a plan. It's not your dad. This guy. Let me tell you. So a couple years ago, not a couple, a lot of years ago, he was a middle schooler, just like you. Came to Fuse, doing his thing, and the Lord changed his life, the Lord saved him, and tonight, he's getting out of the seats that he used to be with you guys, and he's getting up there on the stage, and he's gonna tell you about what God has done in his life. Cool? His name is Andrew Bryan! so much before I really get started I wanted to come out and really give you guys one piece of advice like what God did in my life when I was infused so if you don't hear anything else tonight this is what I want you to hear really invest your time like make it a priority to be here every single week because here at Fuse we love you guys like we love y'all so much we treat you like if you were our own children and I don't have children but I'm sure some parents can attest to that like we love you guys and not only that Jesus loves you guys so much too and he has so many big plans for each and every one of y'all. So I just wanted to get that off my chest tonight. Really, really just invest your time in this thing called Fuse. So guys, I'm going to pray real quick and then I'm going to go ahead and get into the message. Dear God, thank you so much for what you're doing in Fuse. God, I pray that you would just be with me tonight as I speak. That you would just uh, speak through me and uh, not let my words be heard, but your words be heard. Jesus, I love you so much. Thank you, for, thank you so much for dying on the cross for each and every one of us. And thank you for rising again three days later so we could spend eternity with you one day. So in your name I pray, amen. Well, guys, if you didn't know, like Jared just said, we're in a series called The Way. We're in the very last week. And if you're taking notes tonight, this is what the title of the message is. It's Storytellers with a Purpose. Storytellers with a Purpose. How many of y'all like love a good story? Like raise your hands. How many of y'all love a good story? Me too. So like, I don't know about y'all, but Christmas literally just started for me. Like November 1st, Christmas started. I already bought like a 20 foot snowman. So like, I love Christmas, but there's some movies that come out too with Christmas and they're called Hallmark movies. <laughs> they are some of the worst acting ever, but the stories are so good. Like I love to listen to a good love story. So like these stories are so good, but it's crazy because even when we're a little kid, like when we're this tall, we're raised to love a good story. Like me specifically, I remember going to my parents as a little kid and being like, hey, can you tell me this story? Like I know I've heard it the past 300 nights in a row, but I want to hear it again because I love a good story. But that fascination, it doesn't end when we're little. It actually stays with us into eternity. So not only that, but I'm actually about to go pay 8 to $10 in December to watch Star Wars, another great story, because I love Star Wars. 
But I actually have the goat of all stories right now of one of the best storytellers ever. And it's actually Disney. So I have a slide up here. Um, this is like probably my three favorite Disney movies. So we have the Lion King. Lion King is awesome. And then we have Aladdin. I don't care what you say. Aladdin is the best Disney princess movie out there. And the live action one's better. So then, very last but not least, we have Toy Story 4. But the reason this is up here, so if you don't know, me, Drew Hankins, and Woody lead a fuse group. And we actually went to go see this movie this summer. And I'm not saying that students cried during this movie, but like some of the guys cried in the movie. And it's because stories are impactful. They're impactful. But it's not just these stories. These stories are fake, so they can only do so much. But I have somebody else who loves to tell me good stories, and it's actually my grandpa. He's actually in the back. Everybody say, hey, grandpa. Hey, grandpa. So that's my grandpa back there. But the thing that you need to know is that me and him, we're really close. So like, I try to call him every single night and talk to him. But whenever he talks to me, he'll usually tell me a story, whether it be when he was a little kid telling me about him and a billy goat or like him in the military. But like, he'd tell me these stories. But the difference between his stories and these stories is that his stories really happened. His stories really impacted his life, and they made him into the person that he is today. But not only did he tell me stories, he told me stories that were worth listening to because his life is worth reflecting. His life is something that we can look at and say, hey, we want to be like that one day. So his stories are worth listening to, but here's what I wanted to go ahead and say. I'm about to get into a passage of scripture in Acts chapter 8, uh, verse 26 through 40. But if you're taking notes, the first point is stories are impactful. Stories are impactful. So before we actually get into the main part of the scripture, I'm just going to give you a breakdown of what's going on in the first half of Acts chapter 8. So this is what's happening. You have every single Christian in the world. They're all in this one city and the city's called Jerusalem. It would be like if you got every single Christian and you put them in the city of Spartanburg. So that's basically what was happening. You had every single person in Jerusalem and all these people, there were, there were Christians there. Christians like you and me who were telling people about this story about this man named Jesus Christ. This guy who lived a perfect life. And I don't know about y'all, but today, me personally, I've probably already done like a bazillion things wrong. So like that in itself is awesome. But not only did he live a perfect life, he actually died on the cross for my sin and your sin, both past, present and future. But he didn't just die. He rose again three days later. So people were talking about this man named Jesus Christ who did all these things and like they're going, their mind is blown about this story, but they're telling everybody they see because the story that they know is impactful in their lives. So they're telling everybody, but not everybody loves this story. There are people who actually really hate this story to the point where they're persecuting these Christians. And this isn't like, this isn't like the persecution that your parents give you when they're like, hey, uh, you should have made better in class. I'm taking your phone. No, this was like, People were being thrown in jail for believing in this man named Jesus Christ. People were dying for what they believed because they believed in this man named Jesus Christ. Just, just think about that. They were dying for what they believed. That's crazy. But this actually brought about, this actually brought about scattering. So all these Christians, they left this one city. And instead of like everybody being in Spartanburg, it'd be like if they spread across all the states in America and different countries. So you have all these Christians. They're out of Jerusalem. And this seemed like a really bad thing. This seemed like something like the devil would look at and be like, yes, I've won. I'm like, this is where Christianity ends. But this actually wasn't the case. You see, whatever the devil uses for bad, God uses for good every single time. And this is a complete side note. I don't know what you're going through right now, but whatever it is, if something's going bad, whether it be in school or in your family, that bad that's happening right now, it's going to be ended up using for good by God. I just want you to, I just want you to get that. I don't know what you're going through, but there's somebody in this room who's going through something that's terrible. And God's going to use it for good. So we have all these Christians, they scatter, and it seems like a really bad thing, like I just said. But it was actually good because wherever these Christians went, their stories went also. Their stories about this man named Jesus Christ went also. So if it weren't for them, we honestly probably wouldn't have the gospel for ourselves today. So then we meet a man named Philip. And I don't, I don't know what comes to y'all's mind when y'all hear the name Philip, but actually my brother and dad are in the back. So like whenever I hear the name Philip, I think about them. So like if you can think of anybody with the name of Philip, just kind of get, get their like mental picture of their face in your mind while I read this scripture. So we're going to be in Acts chapter 8, verse 26, and going through verse 40. And the title of this is called Philip and the Ethiopian Eunuch. And I have a lot of scripture to read, so you guys got to listen. Are y'all going to listen? Yeah. All right, sweet. So starting in verse 26, it says this. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, rise and go towards the south to the road that goes from Jerusalem to Gaza. 
And the thing that you need to know about this is this wasn't an easy trip. Like this was like a really difficult trip that I'm going to be honest, I probably wouldn't have taken. So I'm going to kind of show you what the trip wasn't. So I have my friend Carter down here and, and this is what the trip wouldn't be. This is like, if I told Carter, I said, hey, Carter, I want you um, to go to the back of the room for me, grab a pen and bring it back to me because I really need to write something important down. That's, that's not what this trip would be. It would actually be like if I got Carter here and I said, hey, I want you to go to Greenville, but that, that would be too easy. I actually want you to walk to Greenville. <laughs> would you do that? But not only do I want you to just walk to Greenville, I actually want you to walk around the building 150 times before you do that. But not only that, I'm not telling you why you're going. You'll find out when you get there. And to add on to that, it was in the middle of the desert is where Philip was at. So let's go ahead and make it 110 degrees also. So like, I don't know about y'all, but whenever it's the summer, I don't go outside anyway. So I mean, like I probably wouldn't go on this trip. But going back in verse 27, it says this. It says, and he rose and he went and there was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Candace, the queen of Ethiopia, who was in a carriage or who was in charge of all her treasure. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was now returning seated in his chariot and was reading from the prophet Isaiah. And the spirit of the Lord said to Philip, hey, go over to that carriage and talk to that Ethiopian. And he said, hey, do you understand what you're reading? And he said, how can I understand what I'm reading unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and sit in his carriage with him. And now the passage of the scripture he was reading was this. And just so you know, this prophet named Isaiah, this is actually what the Old Testament book is. So Isaiah in the Old Testament, chapter 53, this is where that verse comes from. And it says this, it says, like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter and like a lamb is before its shearer, he is silent. So he opens not his mouth in his humiliation and justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation for his life was taken away from the earth. In this passage of scripture, it's in the Old Testament, like I just said, but this is actually about Jesus. It's about what's going to happen to him. It's about the death that Jesus is going to face for you and me. And he's not going to, he's not going to open his mouth. He's going to be silent, even though he's completely innocent. And it says this, and the eunuch said to Philip about whom uh, I ask, does this prophet say this is, is it about himself or is it about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning with the same scripture, he told him the good news about Jesus. And as they were going along the road, there came to be some water. And the eunuch said, look, there's water. What prevents me from being baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stop. And both of them went down into the water and Philip, Philip and the eunuch and Philip baptized him. And when he came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord called Philip away or carried Philip away. And the eunuch saw him no more, but went on rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus and he passed through and preached the gospel to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. So I just want y'all to get a mental picture of this. Like, imagine you're being baptized and then like all of a sudden you come out of the water and you're about to walk out and you and Philip are talking to each other and then boom, Philip disappears. Like teleportation was real in the Bible. Like it's in this verse right here. Like teleportation was real. I don't care what you say. Like that's what happened. So I don't know, you could be walking or you could be baptizing somebody someday and you just might disappear and go to another city. So that's what happened. But Going off that, I feel like there's some things that we as Christians, we can really learn from this man named Philip. First off, Philip was obedient. But not only was he obedient, he didn't hesitate to obey when God told him to do something. We see Philip at the beginning of this story, and he, the Spirit of the Lord comes to him, and he's like, Hey, Philip, I want you to go on this trip. It's going to be a really difficult trip. You're going to be in the middle of the desert, and you're not going to know where you're going, and you're not going to know why you're going there until you get there. Like, just imagine that. Just imagine that. That's crazy. But not only was he obedient there, he was actually obedient in this second half of the story. We see Philip. He's finally made it to the place where God's called him to, and he doesn't know why he's there yet. But then Philip, look, then Philip hears the spirit of the Lord again, and he says, hey, I want you, you see that carriage over there? You see that uh, rich man, the like, second command in Ethiopia under the queen? I, I just want you to go walk over there. And Philip doesn't even walk over there. Philip, like he said, I'll show, the, I'll show the spirit who's boss. He actually runs over there. He runs over there because he knows that the message that he has to tell is worth telling. Because it's impacted his life. And it's made him into the person that he is today. So Philip goes over there. And what I kind of, whenever I hear this part of the story, I kind of think of like what I go throughout like my everyday life. Like I'll be in college uh, and walking around campus and I'll see somebody and maybe the spirit, he'll look at me, he'll kind of just talk to me and be like, hey, you see that guy over there? You see that girl over there? I just want you to go talk to him. I just want you to walk over to him. Like you don't have to start the conversation and make it about me. I'll make it about me. And like oftentimes I'll be like, 
um, are you sure, like, could you, could you send me, like, a sign or something? And God's like, no, Andrew, like, just go speak to him. Like, I'm talking to you right now. Just go tell him about what I've done in your life. And I'm like, well, could you, like, could you maybe, like, make this iPad, like, sling off the table or something? Then, then I'll go. And I'm like, I'm like I, I just stop. And I'm like, I, I don't know why, but it's just me personally. Like, for some reason, I need this, like, big sign for me to actually go talk to somebody. But this isn't how Philip was. Philip did it on the first time. Whenever God told him to do something, he went because he knew that the story he was telling was worth telling. And I feel like that is what we can learn as Christians. There, the story, the man named Jesus who, who lived a perfect life, who died on the cross for our sin and rose again three days later. If he's really impacted us, we need to be able to tell other people about what he's done in our life because it's worth telling. And no one can take anything away from your story because it's real and it's really happened to you and it's really impacted you and it's really made you into the person that you are today. So if you're taking notes, second point is delayed obedience is disobedience. And I kind of just pointed at that, but don't delay when God tells you to talk to someone. Don't do it because if you do, you're going to miss out on opportunities that God wants you to enact in. Like God wants you to tell people about him. And if you don't obey the first time, sometimes you won't have a second time. So go ahead and go into the third point. It is you have a purpose. Everybody say, I have a purpose. And I kind of know like what you guys are going through because like Jared said, I'm only 20 years old. I mean, like I was in middle school a few, six years ago, six, seven years ago. And like when you're in middle school, you can't drive anywhere. Like you have to get your parents to take you everywhere. So it's like, it's really hard to know what your purpose is. But here, here's what it is. It's simply this. Your purpose is the same purpose that Philip had in this story. It's to be obedient when God talks to you. It's to not hesitate in sharing your story about what Jesus did in your life. So if you're taking notes, the very last point is that your story is your purpose. Your story is your purpose. And some of you, you may hear this and you, you hear... Like, what, what really is my story? Like, I believe in this man named Jesus. I believe that he died on the cross. And I believe that he rose again. But like, what, what is my story? And your story is simply this. Your story is, hey, what was your life like before you met Jesus? What was it like? But not only that, when did you meet Jesus? Like, when did you not just like know these things about Jesus? Like, hey, I, I know that like, I know that Jesus lived a perfect life and I know that he died on the cross for my sin and I know that he rose again three days later. But like, when did you actually believe that? When did you believe that for the first time? Do you remember when you believed that for the first time? And then lastly, it's how has your life changed since you met Jesus? And I wanted to give you guys an example because, I mean, just saying it's one thing, but I wanted to give you my story in short. And I can't tell you the full thing because if I told you the full thing, we'd be here all night. But I just wanted to give you those three points right there. So me personally, I grew up in an old Southern Baptist church and I loved going to church because like my friends were there. Like maybe that's why some of y'all are here tonight. It's because your friends are here. But like I, I showed up to church because I loved my friends there and I wanted to be with them and hang out with them as much as possible. And I knew about this man named God. And I knew about this man named Jesus, but I never really gave my life to him. Like I never really entrusted him with all that I had. And then fast forward a couple years later, I end up at New Spring and I'm, I'm like 14 years old and I only hear the second half of a message and it finally clicked. It finally clicked with me. I finally, truly, I didn't just know it. I didn't just know these things about Jesus. I actually believed them for the first time. I believe that Jesus lived a perfect life so, because he knew that we couldn't. We can't live a perfect life. And then I believe that Jesus died on the cross for our sins that we are gonna commit, past, present, and future. He did it for you too. He didn't just do it for me. And then I finally believed that Jesus rose again three days later. But then since then, since I've given my life to Jesus at New Spring, I've encountered friends, friends like Carter, friends like Benji in the back. And I have this good Christian community now. And I've also felt called to ministry. That's why I'm up here. I'm up here because God's called me to tell my story. But he hasn't just called me to tell my story. He's called each and every one of you to tell your story. But not only that, I'm actually living in my purpose now. So that's my story. That's, that's when I gave my life to Jesus. What is yours? When did you give your life to Jesus? When did you really believe it? When did you not just know it? When did you just not study the Bible and say, yeah, I kind of I kinda agree with this. When did you actually believe it? When did you give your life to Jesus? And if not, why not? 
So guys, I want you guys to go ahead and bow your heads and close your eyes. And maybe tonight, as you were hearing me speak about this man named Jesus Christ, who lived a perfect life because he knew we couldn't, who died on the cross for our sins that we were gonna commit, that we did in the past, that we're committing currently right now, and that we're committing in the future. He died for that, he died for our sins. But not only did he die, he rose again three days later so that we could spend eternity with him. When did you believe that? And if not, and maybe tonight you heard, you heard this story about this man named Jesus and you're like, hey, I believe that now. Like, I wanna give my life to Jesus because I believe these things. I believe all that he's done for me. And, I, and because of that, I wanna go tell my story to other people. If that's you, I just, with everybody's heads bowed and every eye closed, I just want you to raise your hand tonight if you wanna give your life to Jesus. That's awesome, that's awesome. Keep your hands up. But y'all, I'm about to pray this prayer and this prayer means nothing by itself unless you actually believe it. So I'm gonna pray this prayer and if you really do want that, if you really do want Jesus to have control of your life, because listen, honestly, by ourselves, we're nothing. We have no purpose if it's not for Jesus. So if you really do want that, I just want you to pray this prayer after me. Dear Jesus, I love you. Thank you so much for living a perfect life. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sin. And thank you for rising from the dead three days later so that we could spend eternity with you. Lord, help me tell my story to other people because that's my purpose. Jesus, I love you. I give my life to you today. It's in your name I pray, amen. Come on guys, give it up for Andrew. There's a, there's a few of you um, that saw raised your hand. And what, what we're about to do is we're about to take a little time right here to do exactly what Andrew said. And we, wanna, we, we don't want to just talk about Jesus. We want to be about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, we ain't, we ain't fake. And so what we're going to do, and what you have that note card in your, in your lap for, is we're going to write down our stories. For a few of you, maybe that story just started. You, you might have given your life to Jesus like 10 seconds ago. See my watch? It's a good joke. Thanks for laughing. But here's the, and guys, you can go and put the questions up on the screen. Think about this. This is, this is like a real.